and welcome to day 50 of the 100 days of narration challenge. I am halfway through this mother. That's crazy. Halfway through. It's insane. It's uh, crazy. Uh, now, uh, right. If you haven't guessed what uh, what this week's theme is from uh, yesterday's book, uh, this week's theme is for the great novels of our time. No, it's not. It's um, it's it. This week is the is 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 for great horrible things of our time in literature, and I'm going to read several excerpts from several things I would never. Ever, 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 ever have on my, on my bookshelf, but um, which would be great material for riffing on. So uh, that's that's what this week is. That's what this week is. Uh, this week is, uh, is, I guess we could call it um, bad novel week or just bad literature week. Um, if you have any suggestions for a possible future uh, series of this, a future week of this, um, feel free to comment. Or what have you, and um, if I if I like reading reading it, or or uh, just flipping through and seeing just hilarious stuff, then uh, I'll do it. I'll I'll go ahead and and uh, and uh, take that suggestion, and I will put in my little corner of things that uh, I will do sometime in the future. <clears throat> anyway, uh, today's thing I'm going to read is actually a poem. So it's going to be pretty short this particular episode. So sorry about that in advance, but uh, yeah, and uh, it's uh, it's just. But hopefully it'll make it up for being ridiculously stupid. It's called "Ode on the Mammoth Cheese Weighing Over Seven Thousand Pounds." Um, yeah, I I um I I don't know why anyone would write a poem about a cheese. I mean, it is weighing over 7,000 pounds, which is something. Um, yeah. And it was, oh, wait, uh, who was it written by? It was written by James McIntyre, who's a name that's not particularly familiar to me. So I'm not sure if it was a world famous, like a poet or something from the 19th century or whatnot. Or did he just write this poem and then die from shame after writing it? I mean, who knows? Who knows? Um, but anyway, let's have a let's have a read of this magnificent piece of text here. We have seen the queen of cheese laying quietly at your ease, gently fanned by evening breeze. Thy fair form, no flies dare seize. All gaily dressed, soon you'll go to the great provincial show to be admired by many a beau in the city of Toronto. Cows numerous as a swarm of bees, or as the leaves upon the trees, it did require to make thee please and stand unrivaled. Queen of Cheese. May you not receive a scar as we have heard that Mr. Harris intends to send you off as far as the, sorry, the great world's show at Paris. Of the youth, beware of these, for some of them might rudely squeeze and bite your cheek, then songs or glees we could not sing, O oh, Queen of Cheese. Wert thou suspended from balloon, you'd cased Pretty sure that's meant to be cast. You'd cast a shade even at noon. Folks would think it was the moon about to fall and crushed them soon. Oh dear God, this is a horrible, horrible thing. It's uh, <laughs> uh it feels like it was a poem written by um, 
someone in high school or something like that. But uh, according to this, since Mr. Harris was born in 19, uh, sorry, 1827 and um, and uh, this poem was written in what, what, 1880 or so, he was about 50. He was about, yeah, 50, 50 when he wrote this. So, um, yeah, that's... Um, that's a great achievement, writing this when you're 50 years old. But, you know, um, good for him, good for him to write a poem about magnificent cheese, the queen of cheese. And this, and there's some footnotes as well, uh, explaining some of the things. Uh, the queen of cheese. Uh, the cheese was made by James Harris at the Ingersoll factory in 1999? No, that can't be right. 1899? Wow, that seems pretty late. <clears throat> now, the great and the great provincial show, uh, which I mentioned in there, the great provincial show, the Toronto Industrial Exposition, founded in 1878 and lit by and lit by electricity and lit by and lit by. Wow, that is a that is a trippy thing to say. And lit by electricity in 1882, where 22 of the 23 buildings focused on agriculture. And uh, that was taken from the Canadian Encyclopedia, second edition in Edmonton, Herting, 1988, page 345. I can't believe there was a page number there. Okay, so that was the Great Provincial Show. And the Great World's Show at Paris um, apparently occurred in 1889. Uh, and the Alpha Tower was built in the 46th ex exhibition, established in 1851 in London. So... There it is. There's the there's the there's that amazing poem to an amazing piece of cheese. Shall we try again? Shall we try again? This time I'm gonna give it even an even more exaggerated grandois grandois grandeur grand grand whatever one of those words um um <clears throat> sense a speech talking. We have seen the Queen of Cheese laying quietly at your ease, gently fanned by the evening breeze. Thy fair form no flies dare seize. All gaily dressed, soon you'll go to the great provincial show. To be admired by many a beau in the city of Toronto. Cows numerous as a swarm of bees, or as the leaves upon the trees, it did require to make thee please and stand unrivaled, Queen of Cheese. May you not receive a scar as we have heard that Mr. Harris intends to send you off as far as the great world's show at Paris. Of the youth, beware of these, for some of them might rudely squeeze and bite your cheek. Then songs or glees, we could not sing, O oh, Queen of Cheese. Wert thou suspended from balloon, you'd cast a shade even at noon. Folks would think it was moon about to fall and crush them soon. And that was Ode on the Mammoth Cheese Weighing Over 7,000 Pounds by James McIntyre. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 they can't all be classics. They can't all be Frankenstein and, Do and uh, uh, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and uh, anything by Jules Verne. No, some of them, some of them, some of them about, are about odes to cheese. With um, with an insipidly silly rhyming scheme, 
I can't believe you made Toronto rhyme. Well, I mean, it's not like like it's hard to rhyme Toronto, but it's just uh, oh, that's 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 just silly. It's uh, it it just it makes me think like the guy was just saying, no, no, what am I going to rhyme it with? Oh no, oh no, a bow. Yes, bow rhymes with Toronto. That's that's very good. That's great. <clears throat> So that was day fifty of the hundred days of narration challenge. Uh, thank you very much for anybody who has been sticking around as long as they have, uh, listening to this thing that I'm doing here. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you'll stick around for the next fifty that I'm planning to do with this. And uh, yes, if you have any suggestions about what I could read next, um, in terms of maybe. Well, give me suggestions in terms of good books as well as bad books. I'm probably going to do another bad book week sometime in the future, but good book week as well would be really awesome. Um, so, yeah, uh, PM me those, uh, the, the, those suggestions or just comment, and uh, I'll try to make note of them as, as, as I go. Okay, well, thank you. Um, day 50 done. Tomorrow, day 51. Day 50 done, tomorrow day 51. That rhymes. Ooh, I could write a poem about that. An ode on the mammoth, um, on the mammoth uh, commenting about my 100,000 pages of whatever. Looks like James McIntyre was a better poet than I.